So since 2008, the year that I turned 18, uh, and I'm 32 at the moment of recording this, Pluto was moving through Capricorn. Uh, so for those of you who are a little bit familiar with astrology, I have a Capricorn stellium and Capricorn is my second house. So Pluto was moving across all of those planets, transiting those uh, through my second house. And since it just moved into Aquarius, I thought I would share with you a few of the big things that this has taught me because this has been happening for all of my adult life and has just started to turn a corner. And my goodness, was it a ride. I mean, I learned so much since I was 18. And Pluto brings destruction and it brings intensity and it reveals hidden gems and brings transformation. It is the, the, the experience of death and rebirth. And so to my identity, to my sense of spirituality, to my values, to my trajectory, things like that, I have experienced major transformation, death and rebirth, things burning away, things falling apart, and also all of it being within the realm of abundance, because it's a second house, and self-worth, and, um, and, and wealth. So a few of the main things that I learned, one of those is that you cannot control or manipulate anyone or anything into making you f feel secure and loved. Doesn't matter what sort of degree you have, doesn't matter what sort of relationship you have, doesn't matter what car you drive, none of that matters. None of that is a representation of true worth. And none of that is true security. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, we see situations in which, okay, like maybe your salary is a, is a representation of how good of an accountant you are or something like that. But that's not your true worthiness. If we're talking true, unshakable, infinite, abundant worth and security, that is only internal. Everything external is going to fall away. Everything external is going to disappoint you or hurt you eventually. And all you will have left is you and God, source, life, the universe. That's all you're going to have left. And so finding security and worthiness there is possibly one of the wisest things that you can ever do. And sometimes that only happens because you lose everything and you have to find that inner strength, that, that inner reserve of security and love and abundance and worthiness. But that is an important and a noble uh, pursuit. And it's hard work. It doesn't come easily to find that sort of security. So that's a really important thing that I learned um, over and over and over and over and over again. And another thing I learned is that we can be living from the fear of not being loved and of not being worthy and have no clue. No clue. We can be doing all sorts of things trying to make sure that we are loved, that we are liked, that we are accepted, and have no idea that it's out of alignment. No idea that it's 
that it's actually rooted in pain and trauma uh, or the devil, you know, however you want to see it, we can have no idea that that sort of stuff can be running the show. No clue. We can think that it's really something that we want and that it is actually really important to us that we have this job or that we have this relationship, that it's part of our purpose. No, a lot of that is nonsense. That's a very unpopular opinion, but oh my goodness, I have seen that to the depths and back in myself and in other people uh, with this this experience, <laughs> with this very plutonic experience since I was 18. Um, so that's a big one for sure. And that's, um, that's another one that comes with, with some life lessons, uh, hard lessons. That's all of this, you know, all of this that I'm sharing with you right now, this has come from hard lessons. Um, and, and that takes a lot of, of soul searching, or it takes a lot of not getting what you wanted to see that sort of reality. Um, yeah. So, so that's certainly one of them. Um, and then another thing that I would say is that I would argue that at the root of all of our suffering, anything that's true suffering is a fear that we are not worthy. Any sort of pain and suffering in relationship and career and in whatever, anxiety, depression. A lot of that, if not all of it, can be boiled down to the fear that you are not lovable and that you are not good. That has been enlightening, noticing that in my life and in other people. <sighs> hmm. And so something else I would say is that, you know, you, you will live your life as a, a bottomless pit that cannot be filled with anything until you learn what true worthiness is, until you learn what true security is, until you find that inner source of abundance until you find the true source of abundance and wealth then you will be a bottomless pit um, that, that just cannot be filled and you will experience a lot of depression and anxiety until you can find that place that is the cure all that is where where you find God that is where you find oneness. That's where you find connection to the universe. That's where you find the source of love. And that is not a small thing. That is everything. That is everything. And then a few other things I've learned would be like your identity is not what you think it is. It's not as important as you think it is. Spirituality is not in a stick of Palo Santo. It's not on the yoga mat. It's not in a church pew. Your values, if you're not living according to them, you're gonna experience a lot of pain and suffering. Nothing external is a reliable representation of what you are actually seeking. You're, you're not going to find wealth and abundance and security and comfort on the outside. Those things are internal. The external stuff matters. It does matter. And I think it's important that I say that. I learned what sort of external stuff actually matters. 
because in this journey of losing so much and so much, you know, fire just burning things away, I had that I had to experience the 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 pendulum swinging and thinking well then nothing external has any value at all and that's also not true our relationships do matter our relationships have an impact on us but we cannot look to them to make us happy we cannot look to them to fulfill us, to make us secure. So we just have to be careful in striking the balance. We cannot expect money to get rid of all of our fears and our anxieties. We cannot expect our job to, to fulfill us constantly and, 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 and be happy and, and you know be loved and wanted constantly because of what we're able to do in our career or our job or whatever. There is a balance. There are certain expectations that we can have of those things and then certain expectations that we cannot pin on those external things. So it's been a really interesting journey. I'm grateful for it in a way. Um, Pluto is intense and since I was 18 especially things have been very intense and have transformed in this way where to many I am unrecognizable <laughs> and have changed a lot but it's because everything that was there before was not real. And that's what Pluto will do. That's what Pluto can do. It will burn away everything that is false and it will reveal the foundation. It will reveal hidden gems. So that's what it's been like. I don't know if any of those, those lessons are of value to you, but, um, I've had a particularly special experience with Pluto, um, with Pluto going through Capricorn, my second house, and going across my sun, Uranus, Neptune, Venus, Saturn, North Node. I got a lot going on in Capricorn, so I thought I would share for that reason, and I hope that it is a value. And I hope that you learned some things. I would love to hear what you learned now that Pluto has, has left Capricorn into Aquarius. Um, and, and I look forward to what Pluto and Aquarius is going to bring us all. So those are my thoughts on that. Thanks for watching.